Jesu has been, uh, Jesu has been a, a friend of this house for, for many years. Uh, I was uh, blessed to get to hear him share during the Renco conference uh, last year. I know he has a heart and passion for missions as I heard him share. He serves as the executive pastor at the Pursuit Church. And he's also the overseer of a ministry called Impact Asia, which is an amazing ministry network of pastors and churches throughout India. So please welcome with me tonight, Pastor Jeshu Ram. Yes, thank you. Hello, 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 Seattle Revival Center. It's good to be in the house of the Lord, amen. Amen, amen. Love Pastor Darren, love what's going on here. One of the reasons I love coming to SRC, anything happens over here. Right? Anything happens. You don't know what you're going to get when you come. Right? Because I know that's so important because we need, we need to make room for the Holy Spirit. Because he has permission to come and interrupt any time. Anytime I want to have a ministry called get out of the way. <laughs> right? How many of you want to be part of that ministry? Right? Get out of the way, you know, or make room for him. Right? Make room for him. Because I believe that we are in a season as a church where we need to make room for our king. We got to get out of the way. Because God is on the move. I want to encourage you, don't listen to what the naysayers are saying about the church. God is on the move. People are getting saved. People are getting healed. There's signs and wonders still happening. Come on. There's more salvations happening today than ever before. More salvations that are happening today ever before. So I'm thankful for what God is doing. For you to see and know and hear what God is doing, you got to sit in a different perspective and you got to sit in a different place. Come on, this is for somebody. Yeah, thanks for having me here. I'm honored to be here. This is my beautiful wife right here, Teresa. <laughs> Introduction over. All right, so... You, you, you got to, we have to be positioned in a different place right now as a body of Christ. Every day, yesterday is old, it's gone. Reposition yourself. Because there's things that God is doing in the spirit. There's things that are happening in the spirit you cannot see in your physical eyes. You got to go up. You got to go up because where God has placed you and me is in heavenly places. For you to see and get a different perspective of God's perspective, you got to be where he's at. Right? Because when you are... Sitting with his perspective, what you see, how you speak, what you declare is very different than looking up. I believe the churches who are partnering in that level and saying, I'm seated in heavenly places, right? I don't think, like I think below, I think from, from above, right? Are, are advancing and taking ground and destroying the works of the devil. Where's the devil? Underneath our feet. He's underneath our feet. That's his place. Okay, leave him there. Don't put him on your shoulder. Right? Don't put the government on your shoulder. Don't put the... Political things on your shoulder. Don't put the pandemic on your shoulder. Keep it underneath your feet. Amen. Amen. We got to see things differently so that we can act differently. The world is looking for the church what we're going to be doing. Amen. Amen. So be encouraged, be lifted up, be comforted, 
God is still on the move. He is still God. He's still on the throne. Yeah? He's still using you and me. There are churches that are on fire for Jesus Christ. They're not giving in to the spirit of this age. They're submitting to the Holy Spirit who's leading them and guiding them. Yeah. It's not about how big the church is. It's how big is your heart and how quick you are to obey what he's asking you to do. Anything can happen here. Anything. I love the song. God is still moving. Healings are still happening. Miracles are still happening. He is, on, he is working right now. Right now. Right now. You know, thousands and millions of Muslims are coming to the Lord. Come on. Come on. Muslims are coming to the Lord. The Muslim nations are opening up for the gospel of Jesus Christ. We got to be excited. Right? Pandemic or no pandemic, Muslims are getting saved. Come on. I'm believing that for the Hindu nations, for the Buddhist nations, that they will come to know the true, resurrected, loving Savior, Redeemer, Healer, all things are possible, Jesus Christ, the only true God. Amen? So get excited. Get excited. So the passage of scripture that I want to bring to you today is from Mark chapter 10. Verses 46 to 52, and we all know this, it's the story of a blind Bartimaeus. So I just want to uh, kind of encourage you today, give you some nuggets so that you can leave with a different perspective. You can leave encouraged, you can leave provoked, you can leave with a, with a different voice and a different declaration in this season in your life. Amen? Yeah. So... Uh, Verse 46, then they reached Jericho as Jesus and his disciples left town. A large crowd followed him. A blind beggar named, a beggar named Bartimaeus, son of Timaeus, was sitting beside the road. When Bartimaeus heard that Jesus of Nazareth was nearby, he began to shout, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. Be quiet, many of the people yelled at him. But he only shouted louder, son of David, have mercy on me. When Jesus heard him, he stopped and said, tell him to come here. So they called the blind man, cheer up, they said. Come on, he's calling you. Bartimaeus threw aside his coat, jumped up, and came to Jesus. What do you want me to do for you, Jesus asked. My rabbi, my teacher, my Lord, my savior, the blind man said, I want to see and Jesus said to him, go for your faith has healed you. Instantly, the man could see and he followed Jesus down the road. It's a beautiful story. We've read it many times. And, and if you want a title, um, the title is Make Decision. Make a Decision. Right? So then they reached Jericho and as Jesus and his disciple left town, a large crowd followed him. You know, wherever Jesus went, there was also a large crowd. Maybe not coming into the town was just Jesus and his disciples. When he was leaving the town, there was always people following him in a large crowd. A blind beggar named Bartimaeus, son of Timaeus. You know what Jericho means? A place of fragrance. That's what Jericho means. Okay, remember Joshua crossing the Jordan River and going Jericho? They were marched around. Yeah, so it is the same Jericho, <laughs> right? It means a place of fragrance. It was a noted city abounding in balm, honey, cypress, roses, and other fragrance products. People would come there to buy these products. Amen? Just imagine when the walls of Jericho came down, it was just not only the walls coming down, but a fragrance getting released in the atmosphere. 
Amen. Amen. Because there's, there's, there's a breaking of, of things that's happening until it's, it's broken. You don't experience the fragrance of it. So God can take broken places in your life and release a fragrance that you've never smelled or experienced before. Amen. There are many times there's broken places in my life where, where I don't smell the fragrance because I'm so focused on the pain and the loss and the disappointment. But others around you going, hey, you smell different today. <laughs> Why? Because it's in the broken places where God is saying, I can use you. Right? It's in the places when, when you are weak, he is strong. It's in the places where things are broken is a place where the fragrance of heaven just manifests. Because that's why Jesus loves broken people. God is looking for broken people willing to say, God, I don't have it all together. I don't know how it's all going to work out. But here I am. Use me. Right? Use me. There's many times when I'm weak, he becomes strong. And so many times what we want to do in our fleshly desires, in our mindset and, and the filters that we have, we feel like I have to have it all together for God to use me. Uh-uh, it doesn't work like that in the kingdom of God. I've tried it. <laughs> yeah, because it's in the broken places you are surrendered. It's in the broken place where we're completely dependent on him. Yeah. Not what you know or what you've experienced or how much have you done or gone through. Amen? <laughs> Timius means highly prized. So Bartimaeus was son of highly prized. Amen. See, his conditions was one thing, but who he was, he was highly priced. Amen. So many times your condition is not your identity. What God says about you is your identity. I'm accepted. I'm loved. I'm an overcomer. I'm the light. I'm the salt. I'm the head, not the tail. Amen. Yeah. Every city has a gate. Because Blind Bachima was sitting at the gate. That's where people came in and people went. Okay? That's where there was a lot of activity going on. That's where he got the most attention. That's where beggars stood. They, they sat at the gate begging for alms at the city gate. Because new people coming and going. At the city gate is where trade was taking place. Marketplaces. When you go to certain countries, when you come into the, the city, you have people selling all kinds of vegetables and fruits. and stuff. When we travel to India or other countries, when you come to the gate, that's where they're doing their business. Because they want to catch people right away. In the coming and in the going. Okay, Gate also represents access. Right? It's also a place of authority. Okay? It's, it's a place of permission. And it's a place where you say who can come in and who can go out. You and I are the gate. Isaiah 60 says about lift up your heads all you gates. Right? Let the king of glory come in. At the city gate is where the leaders of the city would gather and make decisions. Elders. See, they would come and gather and make decisions of people, of the welfare, of the town, what we need to do. It was the gate that they gathered. So the gate, the gate is very significant. For us to understand what's going on. Get this. Without your permission, nothing comes in or goes out. 
Your, you are the gate in your house. You are the gate for your family. You are the gate for your marriage. You are the gate for your workplace. You are the gate for your business. The church is the gate to your city, region, and nation. We as a body of Christ individually and corporately are placed in a place of authority. Because why? Our citizenship is not here. It's in heaven. You and I are the gate for God's glory to manifest in and through us. So it's so important for you and me to align to what heaven is doing. So his assignment can flow through you. The church is the gate right now. The church, the gathering of the church is so key and so important right now because it's the gateway of what's happening in the city. It's the gateway for the region, for the nation. And that's one thing that the enemy knows more than the church. The church is afraid to gather nowadays. It's in the gathering. It's in the coming together. The enemy knows. Watch out. This is a church that's coming together. This is not the church that's wanting to isolate. Our authority is not in isolation. That's what the enemy wants. It's us coming together is where we, we, make, we take advance. We shift atmosphere. Man, yes, I, I wish I had Josh in my house playing the guitar, worshiping, <laughs> leading. No, but, but coming here together, it says when you lift up the name of Jesus, when you lift him up, he gathers all men unto him. That's it. Why? It's not that we, are, we have great worship or our voice is great. No, it's, it's the name of Jesus that has power. When we give him praise, when we give him glory, when we give him honor, it's just not songs and the goose puncher. There's something happening in the spiritual realm. We're taking ground in the spirit. So whenever I stand and come together in a gathering place of worship, that is my perspective. That is my perspective. It's like, I'm in a place of worship because we're gathering here. God, your word says, if I lift your name up, you will gather, gather all men unto you. I think we got to get to a place of desperation of seeing all men come to Christ. We cannot be complacent anymore as a church. We got we to take a place. Wherever you go, you're the gate. You're in the car, you're the gate. You're driving places, you're sensing something, you're the gate. You have the authority and you have the power, resurrection power of the Holy Spirit that partners with you and say, Holy Spirit, whatever's going on, let's take care of it right now. I just released the kingdom of God in this place, in this atmosphere. It shifts everything. When we go to mission strip, we, when we take teams to India, we have a day off to go shopping. There's no day off in the kingdom of God. There's no day off. Because you're the gateway. You and I are the gateway. Every time you lift your head up, kingdom of glory starts manifesting. So when you're walking on the streets on your day off, when people tell you, when the shop owner comes around and says, you cannot come into my store. I'm going, what's going on? He's like, you cannot come to my store. Go. Go. I'm like, oh. It's not a day off. I have assignment every day. So I'm like, I'm coming into your store and I'm going to bring the light of Jesus. I want to shift the atmosphere in this place. So I go to that store to shop, but I'm shopping differently. Right? Why? Because I'm positioned in a different place. Yeah, because when you're positioned in that place, it's not only you feeling, it's also the principalities and powers feeling the same thing. Because when you're positioned, they have to tremble. 
they have to tremble. Because when you position your, when you sit in that position, the enemy knows what his position is. Right? So don't worry about what the enemy is doing. Just, just go up to what God is doing. What he's saying. What he's wanting to show you. Right? Amen? Miracles happen. Healing happens. Demonic strongholds break. Atmosphere shifts. Come on, church. Let's be the church. Let's be the church. Yeah. Keep on gathering. Let's all keep on. Let's all keep coming together. Love the connect groups. Let's let's gather together. Shift the atmosphere. Whether you're in a restaurant, whether you are cooking together, whether you're in your neighborhood, when you just gather in that place of just worshiping and talking about God and testifying, it shift the atmosphere in the neighborhood because you become the lighthouse. You are the stronghold, not the enemy. Because you go in there, you become the stronger stronghold. Whatever stronghold that's there in that place, they need to submit to you. Because who is in you is greater than in this world. Amen. So here's my question. What kind of decision are you making and who are you letting influence your decision right now at your gate? Because I believe this year, for some of you, it's decision time. It's decision time. And it was for blind Bartimaeus, he had to make a decision. He had to make a decision. So when blind Bartimaeus heard that Jesus of Nazareth was nearby or passing through, he began to shout. Jesus, son of David, have mercy on him. See, it's when he heard, he began to shout. You got to understand, he was blind, but not deaf. Right? He was blind, but not deaf. Why did he start shouting? Because Jesus, Jesus was, came into that time, but he was leaving. So blind Batman was sitting there listening to all the testimonies of what was happening and hearing who this Jesus is and what was happening in Jericho. In Jericho. Because he heard that this was the Jesus, that all the miracles were happening. So you have to be, listen to this, what you hear is directly connected to what you declare. got to get this what you hear is directly connected to what you declare because blind Bartimaeus had to make a decision he had a choice he heard it was Jesus he could have said oh it's just Jesus catch you next time see you later maybe you'll come back again we can meet then no 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 he had to make a decision. He's like, this is the day. This is the day. This is my time. This is decision time. I have to do something here because who's passing by is the one that I've been hearing about. Because he could not see Jesus, but he heard testimonies of who Jesus is. So many times in our life, we can't see things, but we can hear his voice. Amen? Because you're hearing and you're seeing and you're declaring. It's all connected. If one is off, the other one activates. So many times I cannot see things clearly, but I know what God has said. I know what he's spoken. I know the promises. I know what he's done in the past. I know what he's doing. And I, for, me, for me to see what he's going to be doing, I got to keep on hearing his voice. Because faith comes by what? Hearing. Hearing what? His word. So what are you hearing right now? 
Because so many times when what you're seeing is clouded, you got to hear something different. You got to hear something different. You got to go above the news. You got to go above the political situation. You got to go above all the hindrances. You got to go above. Because what we're seeing right now can discourage you, can disappoint you, and also can change the way you talk. Yeah. Because that's why it's so important that you and I, not only we, we're, we have gates. I gate. Your gate, mouth, is a gate. So what are you giving permission to in this season in your life? Over your marriage, over your children, over your house, over your workplace, over your business. What are you giving permission to? Yeah, we got to hear things differently so we can change our declaration. So blind Bartimaeus was in that place of saying, it's decision time. The one that I've been hearing about is leaving town. This is my opportunity. And what does he do? He starts yelling. Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. The crowd said, be quiet. But what did he do? He shouted even louder. He shouted leader, even louder. He said, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. Hey, he's busy. He's on his way to the next town. He's on his way to his next father's assignment. Don't distract him. Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. See, he had the revelation of who Jesus is. There might be other beggars there. I don't know. Doesn't say, but I believe there were other beggars there. But blind Bartimaeus chose that day in his life. Today is going to be a different day for me. Today is going to be a different day. Today is going to be my different declaration. I'm changing my declaration today. I'm changing my talk today. I'm changing my language today. Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. His revelation, he knew who Jesus, he knew the lineage of Jesus. He knew that this was the Messiah, the promised one that I've been hearing about. Not son of Mary or Joseph. He says, son of David, have mercy on me. See, you're going to have people that want to quench your voice to say with the religious hindrances, the religious cap that will come there and say, every time when you're going after the things of God, there's a religious spirit that says, ah, uh, ah, uh, ah, uh, you're being too spiritual right now. Right? Today is not your day. Maybe you need to grow in your faith a little bit more. No. I think blind Bartimaeus made a ch choice. It's like, I'm going to be louder than my critics. I'm going to be louder than, than the negative things. That I'm going to be louder than my condition. I'm going to be louder than the other voices. Because we got to shout higher than the limitation, the limiting view of our situation, than the noise of negativity. There's negative voices all around us, all around us. But I think we got to choose. It's like, I'm going to, I'm going to make my praise louder than my situation and circumstances and condition. Because that's the power in our declaration of who God is. That's the power in our praise. That's the power in our worship. Because the praise means to plow. 
the definition of praise, it means to plow. Because when you're plowing, you're creating new ground. When you're plowing, whatever's underneath there must submit to you. Because you have the advantage. Not it. When you plow, you know something is going to give. Something is going to make way. Something is going to break through. Something is going to happen. Something is going to get unlocked. Because that's what happens when you praise and when you worship and you declare. You plow. The hard ground. It's time to plow the hard ground. It's not the time to just look at the plow and say one day. No, today is the day. Take your plow. Take your plow. Your plow could be your marriage. Your plow could be your children. Your plow could be your workplace. Right? Your plow could be saying yes to God. Your plow is to saying, I'm going to give everything to my God, my Savior. Your plow is to coming back into the family of God. It's time for us to be louder than the voices around us. I love this. Verse 49 says, when Jesus heard him, he stopped and said, tell him to come here. So they called the blind man. Cheer up. These are the same people who are yelling at him to be quiet. Now they're saying, hey, cheer up. He's calling you. So, but <laughs> the crowd went from yelling to helping him to bring to Jesus. So important to understand that when your cry is agreed with Jesus' voice, every principality must submit to his assignment. Amen? Let me say that again. When your cry is agreed with Jesus' voice, every principality must submit to his assignment. Because when he cried out, son of David, they said, be quiet. But when Jesus heard blind Bartimaeus, he said, bring him here, draw him, bring him to me. Then they submitted to that voice, to that agreement. Because every time you pray, every time you seek the Lord, when you ask the Lord, there's an agreement that's happening in heaven. Amen? And it will get established. It will. So keep on knocking, keep on asking, keep on contending, right? Breakthrough is on its way. Breakthrough is on its way. I love what happens next. Watch what happens. Bartimaeus threw aside his coat and jumped up and came to Jesus. I can camp here for another hour. I love that. I love that. What did he do? He threw aside his coat or the garment that was there. He jumped up because that was his act of faith. He didn't take his coat with him. He made a decision. He's like, this thing right here that's on me right now, it's not going to be mine anymore because who is calling me? Who I am drawing near to. I got to take this thing off. Because in those, in those days for you to be a beggar, it was an assigned place. Everybody knew who you were. Because there was also a, a, an identity placed on the back of you saying, this is blind Bartimaeus. He has permission to stay here and beg. So when Jesus called him, he took off his garment and said, this thing that's been put on me all my life is no more. I'm, I'm taking off this old garment. I'm stepping into the new thing that guys has for me. I'm stepping out of the old and I'm stepping in to the new. Because he's, that was his place of decision making of saying, uh-uh, I'm going to have a new garment from now on. Because of who's calling me. The healer, the redeemer, the savior. The one that has the answer to 
my prayers. He's calling me. I love it. Jesus, he comes there and Jesus asks him, what do you want me to do? I'm like, Jesus, don't you know? Don't you see? He's blind. But I love it that Jesus asks him, what do you want? Because so many times our our need and our request can change in a journey and it can turn to something else. So Jesus wanted to make sure that he knew what he is really asking for. I love David when David says in, in the Psalms, he's like, one thing I ask, one thing I seek is to dwell in the house of the Lord, to gaze upon your beauty. Right? We got to make sure that what we're asking and what we're seeing is the one thing, it's the same thing. So many times we're asking for something and we're seeking something else. That's why Jesus is like, what do you really want me to do for you? Right? He could have asked for anything. But blind Bartimaeus is like, I want to see. I want to see. So today, right now, in this season, what are you asking for? We've got to evaluate our asking. What am I asking for? God, I want the pandemic to be over. Right? God, I want a new government. I'm asking for nations. I'm asking for nations. I'm asking for this nation. I'm asking for America. I'm here as a missionary to this nation. I'm asking for America. I'm asking for America. I'm asking for Asia. I'm asking. I'm asking. Yeah. Because I'm not asking for a change of condition, condition or circumstance to ha- change, but I'm asking for heaven to invade. Yeah, because when heaven comes, everything changes. Yeah, what, what the world needs right now, what this nation needs right now is revival and awakening. Yeah, revival and awakening. There's, that's, that's, where, that's where it's an encounter with Jesus Christ. It's an encounter with the true God. It's an encounter with the power of the Holy Spirit where people come to realize and their eyes are open, they're awakened. To, to their purpose. They awaken to the Savior of the world. They were awakened to the Redeemer of this world. So what are you asking? Yeah. There's things in the spirit that are happening right now. I feel it right now. I feel it right now. Hell it's trembling. Heaven is rejoicing. Amen. Because why? Because through, through the word of God, through the spirit of God, I'm, I'm helping you guys to see things differently and position yourselves differently in this time and this season. I'm encouraging you. I'm provoking you. I'm challenging you to make a different decision and different agreement. It's an agreement. When two or three agree, what happens? He's there. Yeah. God commands his blessing. When brothers dwell in unity, God commands his blessing. That's why when you come together, sit together like this, what are you saying? We're unified. We're one. We're one. We're coming together. So the blessings of God overflows. Overflows. So I get excited when we gather together. Your decision determines your direction. Your decision determines your direction. The same thing was happening with blind Bartimaeus. He's like, my decision today is changing my direction. Because after he got healed, after he saw, what did he do? He followed Jesus. That was his direction. So I want to give you six things. 
right now through this passage to you. But like real quickly, I'm just going to read it and we're going to finish and we're going to pray for people. Yeah. So how do I position myself to make right decisions? How do I make position myself to make heavenly decisions where I'm seated in, in, in high places? Number one, what are you hearing and what are you declaring? Number two, don't let your critics be louder than your praise. Number three, obey and draw near to his voice. It's an obedience. I believe that there's a, there's a place of radical obedience that God is calling us to. Right now, as a body of Christ, corporately and individually, in your day-to-day -day life, there's a radical obedience. The little nudges of the Holy Spirit say, hey, go lay, hand, lay hands on that per person. Or go ask that person what they need for prayer. Just little radical obedience. The radical obedience is not that where you get shooken. Right? It's not that. It's not the lightning and the voice of heaven comes. It's like, this is it. No, it's in the small, still voice, the little nudges. Be radical with those. And draw near to yourself. Throw away what was hindering and holding you back. Throw away. Get rid of it. Some of you need to do a spiritual wardrobe change. The garments that you were wearing last season is not going to work for you this season. Because God has a different garments for you. All right, so you might have to go spiritually, do a physical prophetic act, go into a wardrobe and say, this clothes right here, done. In our house, our daughter came to our house during the Christmas break. She went through our closet. And she's like, Dad, all these things are old. No more. It doesn't work anymore for you. You don't look good in it anymore. Times have changed. So let's go shopping. You know, that was really hard for me. That's my, that's my favorite. That was favorite one. I like that one. She's like, Dad, trust me. We're in a different time, different season. Right? So are you going to let go or are you going to keep on holding on to this? Yeah. Because until you let go of the old, the new does not come in. Right? Now I have a space in my wardrobe. I'm looking for the new things to come in there. Right? I get to go shopping. I get to go shopping for new clothes. Because why? The old things are not there, man. It's in goodwill. It's in goodwill. It's, it's gone. It's gone. And I was putting that in the bag and I'm just going, is there something going on here? There's something happening here spiritually prophetically in our lives. Right, hon? Yeah, you should have seen, you should have, they, they watched me going, yeah, you're cringing. I'm like, yes, I am cringing. I'm attached to this thing. There's a soul tie over the shirt, over these jeans, over the shoes. I have to make a confession. I have more shoes than my wife does. Yeah, exactly. So there, we get attached to things. Right? When God is saying, it's time for you to let go because I want to do something new. So whatever garment that you're wearing right now that you're saying that God is telling you to let go, doesn't matter how much you paid for it, let it go. Give it away. Give it away. Don't make it your tithe. <laughs> That's a different message. Number five. Make your need known and be courageous to be vulnerable. Make your need known and be courageous to be vulnerable. Courageous vulnerability looks like you got to take risks. You got to let people in. You got to let people in. There's some people that God has assigned for you in this season that you got to let them in. Healthy, godly, loving, caring, truth speaking people, objective people that will come in and say, uh uh, 
You're wearing this for too long. Let's throw it away. Let's burn it away. Let's put on the new that God has for you and me. Amen? Lastly, choose to follow Christ every day. Choose to follow Christ every day. Every day. Be sensitive to his voice. Every day. Holy Spirit, how are you leading me? Every day. Every day. God, what are you saying? What are you doing? Amen? Amen. I want to leave you with this. This is what blind Bartimaeus did. He decided to move from being a beggar to being a believer. Amen? Yeah. He moved from, from begging, from begging to believing. I believe it's time for the church to stop begging and to start believing. So many of us have been sitting in that place of just saying, God, when, when, when? God is saying, you just need to believe those things will happen. You got to just be believing for your church. You got to believe for your family. You got to believe for your marriage. You got to believe for your business. You got to believe for your nation. Because all things are possible for those who believe. It's time to believe. It's time to make a decision to say, I'm going to take my place. I'm not a beggar anymore. My prayer life is changing. The way I see things is changing because the way the beggar sees or the believer sees is very different. You got to move from being a victim to a victor. Come on, there's no room. There's no room for that right now. We are warrior brides. Come on, you are son and daughter of the Most High God. You and I have our authority. You and I have the keys. The kingdom of God is within you. The resurrection power of the Holy Spirit is within you. It's time for you to change your position and start declaring with the voice of Jesus in your life. Amen. Let's all stand. Holy Spirit, thank you, Lord. Thank you. It's time to change our language in this time. It's time to change our perspective in this time. It's time to change our position in this time. You know, you've never lost your position. You just forgot where you were sitting. Yeah, you're still in that place. You just need to remember. You just need to remember, no matter what's going on in, in your, don't let circumstances, don't let the surrounding voices, don't let situations, don't let what the enemy is doing to, to make you forget your position and your place. Yeah, you're not a beggar anymore. You're a believer. You're a conqueror. That's who you are. That's who you are. I just see some of the eyes as being opened. Yeah, if you're watching at home, right now God is, God is bringing healing to your ear. You're going to start hearing. You're going to start seeing clearly. Your vision, the blurry vision is gone. God is clearing your vision right now in the name of Jesus. Yeah, somebody's knee is getting, a uh, right knee cap is getting healed, whether it's in this room or in the house as you're watching and listening. Yeah, God is bringing healing. Somebody's neck is getting healed right now, whether it was through an accident. Yeah, or a sports event that you were playing and you can't play anymore because of that. So God is healing your neck right now, those muscles. Yeah, those tendons right now in the name of Jesus, alignment, alignment right now. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you. Thank you. God is healing somebody's stomach. Right now, if you have some uh, digestive stuff, you cannot eat certain things, but God is bringing healing to you right now in the name of Jesus. God, I pray, I pray for the digestive system right now to be whole in Jesus' name. To be whole in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Yeah, some, some of, somebody's been praying for their daughter to come back. I believe God is saying your daughter is coming back into the kingdom of God. Your daughter is coming back into the family because there's a call and a purpose in your daughter's life. Yeah, as a worshiper, as a leader, to lead many into the presence of God. 
Yeah, we call the daughter back right now in the name of Jesus. Daughter, come back. Come back to the family of God. Come back. Take your place. Take your position. You are a weapon in God's hand. I call you right now. Jesus. Come on, church. Yeah, just lift up your voice. Let's lift up your voice. Pray. 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 Pray in the spirit. Pray in the spirit. Pray in the spirit. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Your kingdom come. Your will be done. Your kingdom come. Your will be done. Yeah. Holy Spirit, baptize us again right now. Baptize us again. A fresh baptism of your spirit. A fresh baptism. Yeah. A baptism for this season, for this time, for this year, God. A fresh baptism. Pour out. Pour out right now. Tip the ball. Tip the ball, Papa. Tip the ball. Jesus. Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. Wow, I just feel the increase of his presence. Increase of your presence. Increase of your presence. Wow. Suicide. Suicide. We come against the spirit of suicide right now. Come against the spirit of death right now. In the name of Jesus, we break it off. We break it off. We release life in abundance. When enemy comes to steal, kill, and destroy, we release life in abundance right now. Right now, we come against that spirit. We come against that influence right now. Enemy, get your hands off. Get your hands off right now. In the name of Jesus, you have no power. You have no authority. You are underneath our feet. Underneath us. So we release life right now. Jesus' name. Yeah, depression be gone in the name of Jesus. Depression be gone on the name of Jesus. Over this region, over this state, we come against every curse in the name of Jesus. I will release the blessing of heaven right now. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, only do, only do what you can do. Only do what you can do. We make ourselves available to you, Lord. Come. Come, invade. Come, invade. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Shura baba da baba baba. Kiara baba yatara mama ye. Ishita tara baba. Yeah, strongholds in the mind, strongholds in the mind. Yeah. God is just replacing things and putting things in order in your mind, in your thinking. Yeah, in your mind and thinking. We come against every lies of the enemy. Every lies of the enemy. I just want to declare over your mind and say the truth of God, the word of God is more powerful. Then the lies of the enemy and the voice of the enemy right now in the name of Jesus in this time. So if we put on the full armor of God, the helmet of salvation, the helmet of salvation right now. Some of some of you have been questioning your salvation. I rebuke that right now in the name of Jesus. You said yes to Jesus. You belong to him. You are saved. You are in the family of God. You've been grafted in and rooted in Christ Jesus. We silence that voice in Jesus' name. Yeah, every stronghold of the mind. Thank you, Lord. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Every, we take every thought captive and we pull it down and bring it into submission of Jesus Christ right now. Yeah, every thought, every thought against your identity, against your assignment, against your purpose, against your calling, whatever thought that's there, we pull it down right now. We capture it. We capture it right now. We capture it. Capture those thoughts right now. You have the authority to do that. Yeah, the word of God said that you and I are supposed to do it, nobody else. 
Yeah, pull down that stronghold and bring it into submission of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Wow. Wow, wow. God is healing a heart murmur. Yeah, if you're in this room or watching online, if you're, there's a heart murmur going on, God is healing that right now. He's strengthening your heart in the name of Jesus. Yeah, we cancel every curse over your heart in the name of Jesus, and we say your heart is whole. Your heart is whole. Your heart is strong. Yeah, and your heart belongs to Jesus Christ. Josh, um, Joshua, right? Josh, when you were when you were le leading worship, I just felt the Lord was saying, I, I saw over you the writing that says, "You, your house is a house of healing and restoration." Yeah, people are going to enter into your house because of the presence of God. Because I, because I know I, I sense that the 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 worship that happens in your house. It just doesn't happen here on the stage, but it happens in the secret place because of that secret place encounter, because of the secret place of drawing, of being raw in the presence of God. People are going to come into that presence and receive healing and restoration. Yeah, it's a house of miracles, a house of healing, spiritually, physically, and emotionally. That's what happens. That's what happens when you lead worship. You bring people into that encounter. Encounter. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. I also see that God is just increasing your influence as well. Yeah, I don't know whether you travel or do worship. I see you doing that in this in this year, in this season, because wherever you go, you're going to shift atmosphere. Yeah. It might be on the street corner. It might be in a dark place or a heavy spiritual stronghold that you're going to go there with your guitar and you're going to bring a different stronghold in that situation in that place, in that city, in that area. So thank you, God, for Josh. Thank you that he's a weapon in your hand. Weapon in your hand. A sharp weapon that's been sharpened by the word of God, that's been sharpened by the presence of God. Thank you, Lord. Bless my brother and his family. Thank you, Father. Thank you. Yeah. If you're contending tonight, if you're saying, I've been a beggar, I want to be a believer. I want to make a decision today over my life. Whatever it is, I want to encourage you, come to the altar because this is your decision time. Today, I don't need to know what it is. The Lord knows. Because just like blind Bartimaeus, he said, I'm not going to be sitting here as a beggar. I'm going to see and I'm going to follow because he was he believed who was going by he believed in Jesus he believed in the promises of God he believed what Jesus can do and I believe that God is calling you to that place tonight today so if it's if that's you come to the altar whatever it is we want to pray for you want to lay hands on you and want to bless you want to agree with you so that what God wants to establish, he can establish. For some of you, as you, as you come forward, God is, you've been asking, God, God, what is my assignment for this year? What is my assignment for this season? I believe God wants to reveal to you tonight your assignment as you come to the altar. Nobody needs to lay hands on you. Just your act of faith, just like blind Bartimaeus. His faith was taking out their garment and throwing it away and running to Jesus. That was his act of faith to receive his sight. So let this, you coming to the altar be an act of faith for you today. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Holy Spirit. So Father, Holy Spirit, just have your way right now. Reveal. 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 Thank you.
get to some prayer partners. Yeah, prayer team, just come lay hands on them and just pray for them. That would be great. Yeah. Thank you, Lord. watching online or listening yeah step into that place step into wherever you are make it an altar take some time right now and press in press in press in go beyond beyond those voices cancel all those voices the voice of unbelief agree with the voice of heaven agree with the voice of Jesus right now Jesus thank you Holy Spirit thank you thank you brother um, I just really wanted to ask him if he could just pray for awakening and revival close this tonight. I just feel like this this country is in such need right now of what he was sharing earlier about a, a great awakening. I've heard these stories of great awakenings in the past and the and the, the repercussions that came and the, the souls that were saved and lives were changed and, 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 and culture was changed and cities were changed. I just want to ask him if you could just, just pray for that right now. I just agree with me as we pray. Father, we just agree right now over this nation, this great nation that you have called by your name, Father. In God we trust. We thank you, Father, for the fathers and mothers who have gone before us. Father, preparing the way. So, Father, I pray right now, do it again. Do it again, God. Do it again. Father, you are on the move. Do it again. We just pray for the outpouring of your spirit over America. We pray for an awakening of in America. They will awaken. They will awaken to the destiny. They will awaken to the purposes. They will awakening to the desires of the forefathers of this nation. The foundation of this nation. Father, thank you that revival is for us today. Today, awakening is for us today. We say, America, awaken. Awaken to your calling. Awaken to your purpose. Awaken. Take your place. Take your place. So, Father, I pray the churches, all the churches in America, God, will get out of fear and come into the perfect love of Jesus Christ and stand in agreement. To stand in agreement and declaring and declaring this nation belongs to Jesus. This nation belongs to Jesus. Right now, pour out your spirit like never before. Pour out your spirit like never before, God. Do it again in America. Move in your spirit. Empty the hospitals, Lord. Empty prisons right now. Empty every bar in the name of Jesus. And fill the church. Fill the gathering places. Fill the gathering places, Lord. Bring them in. I pray for a move of your presence like never before. Your presence, God, will go to every neighborhood, every street corner. The people will be drawn. Every church that walk by, they'll be drawn to go in and receive. I will declare salvation over this nation. And we say, America shall be saved. America shall be saved. America shall be saved. Thank you, Lord. 